It's summer in Antarctica, and the sun won't set for another three months. By then, this vast plain of ice will break apart, revealing the clear waters of McMurdo Sound. In the distance is a dive hut and a hole through the ice eight feet deep. The divers here conduct research from marine biology to climate change. My name's Rob Robbins. I'm the dive supervisor for the US Antarctic program. Yeah, I tell you, uh, doing this for 38 years, every single dive I sit at the hole going, I cannot believe I get to do this. It's just spectacular. I am Steve Rupp, co-dive supervisor at the US Antarctic program. Every dive I make is, it's a nice anticipation because I know I'm gonna have 30 to 40 minutes of just, just hearing my bubbles and my breathing in and out and just looking at this beautiful environment. It's just nice to get down there and kind of have my zen. The first thing you notice is it's cold. You're going through that tube, right? The hole in the ice. And so you're just kind of fighting your, your way down that. And then once you break out, you're under the ice and it's just gorgeous. This was a really good year because there wasn't much snow. It was probably the lightest year that we've had in a lot of years underwater. So it starts out with a just incredible blue ceiling. It almost looks like blue sky a lot of times with, with cracks in it. And then as the sun starts being up more partway through October, we start not having sunset anymore. So the sun just starts going in a circle around us. All the algae and the diatoms start growing and the little cracks and crevices in the ice. And, they, and so the blues kind of start turning green in, in spots and patches will turn yellow and, and brown as, as they reach their various stages in life and die off. On the surface, you pretty much see brown, white, and, and blue, and that's about it. And down there, it's just always changing color. The water is cold, 28 and a half degrees, that's, that's pretty cold. The surface of the uh, ice is a lot colder than underneath. As the ice forms, it turns into fresh water, so it squeezes all the brine out. So that heavy brine goes down through the ice, and uh, as it comes in contact with the seawater, it freezes it because it's very cold. And so it just keeps growing and growing, and these stalactites form. Anchor ice is what forms on the seabed. It's this almost like plates of glass, you know, at several different angles, and it just attaches to everything that it can. Unfortunately, it also pretty much kills everything that it, it covers. And it normally goes down to about 30 foot of depth. You can kind of wave your hand through it and it, it floats up and yeah, I kind of feel like you're in a dream sometimes. It's really strange. One of the neat things about the seals here is you almost always hear them. Almost every dive, even if you don't see seals, you hear them. The sounds they make are uh, otherworldly, I'd say it'd be a good way to put it. It's a combination of chirps and long wails and squeaks, and it's not really a chirp, but they do kind of a thump. And I don't know how they do it with their lungs or whatever, but you can, you can actually see it when they're doing it. Their whole body kind of quivers a little bit it's kind of a pressure wave or something. They're just such incredible swimmers. We see them on the surface when they're laying on the ice and we refer to them as slugs sometimes because they're just laying there and they look so unwieldy. But I think that's exactly what we look like to them underwater because they just swim by with such ease and 
I don't think they ever really even consider us any kind of a threat because we're just so slow and cumbersome looking to them. So at Pierce's casing, there was a uh, seal skeleton there that we'd seen in a previous dive this season. The seal researchers here, they're convinced that it's a seal that had come from an isolated seal population at White Island. And somehow this seal has made it to here. It obviously died somewhere along the line. They're really interested in how that might have happened. This is some of the clearest water I, I would think in the world. The water is so clear that you don't really have little particles in the water that cue you as to whether you're going down or up too fast. With the clear water, the other thing that happens is you, ooh, that's a really big sponge down there. I'm just gonna go check it out. And it's much further away than you think it is. Probably 160 feet, too deep. The observation tube, it's just a tube that goes down, a little bulge at the bottom that has windows around it, so people can climb down and, and observe things without getting wet. It's actually kind of fun for us because whenever we see somebody in it, we'll go swim over if we're making a dive and take a picture of them and then try to find them later and, and kind of gives them something to look at too. Clumsy divers. We wear a lot of insulation in those dry suits, so in general, we don't get super cold. But things like your hands, which you can't put enough insulation on and still be able to do things, get really cold. After 15 minutes, especially if you're holding anything in your hands, your hands just start aching and you, you keep diving until you just can't use them anymore. And that's when it's time to come up. It's kind of weird coming up out of that hole. It's a, a lot of times it's really bright. All the windows are open. It's just, it's, it's kind of sensory overload with the brightness. And then, then you realize you have to climb up that ladder with, with your gear on to, to pop back out again. And it's a bit of a climb. It used to be easier 20 years ago. The ladders have changed or something because it definitely used to be easier. We don't want anyone to know this. You're not gonna tell anyone, but um, it's probably the easiest diving I'll ever do. People think it's super macho to dive down here. In fact, we drive out across nice smooth ice to a warm fish hut. We sit around the fish hut, drink cocoa, whatever, plop into the hole, go do our sciencey stuff, come back up into a nice warm hut. No rocking boat, no, it's, it's actually pretty easy. But that's our secret. 